welcome to the Queen's Gallery. My name is Flora Vesterberg. I'm an art historian and broadcaster, but also a collector of Japanese prints and ceramics. And so I'm thrilled to be here for the Japan Courts and Culture exhibition. I'm here to share with you my personal highlights from this pioneering exhibition from the Royal Collection Trust. It focuses on the cultural and diplomatic exchange between the British and Japanese royal and imperial families over 350 years. The exhibition is part of a milestone year, not only because of the Platinum Jubilee, but also the 25th anniversary of Asian Art in London, an organisation which brings together galleries, auction houses and more for an inspiring programme happening between the 20th of October and the 5th of November 2022. I'm looking forward to meeting with Rachel Peet, Curator of Japan Courts and Culture, to learn more. Rachel, thank you so much for having us at the Queen's Gallery Buckingham Palace. You've curated a beautiful exhibition. I've always been interested in contemporary Japanese ceramicists and sculptors like Jenny Min, Ruth Asawa, Marie Ruth Oda, and also the sellout exhibitions with Yoi Kusuma at Tate Modern, Victoria Miro. It feels like an opportune moment to look a little bit further back in history. One of the first pieces which caught my eye was this beautiful sake vase. The pigments are so strong, it's so perfectly preserved. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Friends of Winter motif? Absolutely. This motif is called the Three Friends of Winter and it's really beloved in East Asian art. It takes its name from the three plants. You've got pine, which is evergreen. You've got bamboo, which bends in stormy weather but doesn't break and then you've got plum blossom, which is the first to flower in the new year. And so together, they're this perfect emblem of steadfastness, loyalty, enduring friendship, which makes it an ideal symbol for a diplomatic gift to Queen Victoria in the 1860s. So Queen Victoria was receiving these extraordinary gifts from the Japanese imperial family. How often was she then donating these gifts to leading cultural institutions in London? That's a great question. Queen Victoria received a whole array of exquisite gifts from the Japanese imperial family during her reign, such as a magnificent embroidered folding screen sent by the Emperor Meiji for her Diamond Jubilee in 1897. But she was also extremely keen that members of the public should see these, and so she made a bequest of a whole series of Japanese works of art to what is now the V&A and was then known as the South Kensington Museum, including four sake bottles just like this one to my right. And with these sake vases, we're obviously seeing such a strong botanical theme. That's something that I've also noticed throughout the rest of the exhibition, particularly also the photographs and the fans that we're going to be seeing later. What is the significance of botany within Japanese culture? Nature has been absolutely central to Japanese art and culture for millennia, in part because Shinto, Japan's indigenous belief system, focuses on the landscape as the home of local deities or kami. Um, and as a result, there's a real sensitivity by Japanese artists to the birds and plants and flowers um, in the world around them. And you'll see that dotted around the exhibition, as you mentioned, um, in objects as, as wide ranging as porcelain, hanging scroll paintings, and even on lacquer boxes. These photographs are breathtaking. So they were taken in the ephemeral cherry blossom season in Kyoto. I've always loved contemporary Japanese photographers like Nobuyoshi Araki with his recent Pino Collection exhibition, but also Hiroshi Sugimoto, who has a very similar approach to the landscapes, very calming and meditative. One question I had though was, given how industrialized Japan was by this point, why are we not seeing any traces of this metropolis? The photographer Okamoto Toyo, I think, is deliberately reacting against the sort of bustling urban life that marked Japan by the 1920s. And he's also moving away from the very complex studio photography techniques that were popular at the time. And so instead, he sort of draws back the curtain and gives us a glimpse of the ancient imperial capital, Kyoto, as it might have been. Um, and we think he actually took these images by simply walking the streets with a simple pocket camera. And the result is a real sense of kind of pastoral tranquility um, and quietness. That tonality that we're seeing and also the flatness, 
we just had the important Japanese print sales at Sotheby's, another member of Asian Art in London, and so I was wondering if the Japanese Yukio prints might have inspired the photographer. Absolutely, I think that's something you can see coming through here, particularly in the asymmetrical composition of many of the images, which draws on that favourite woodblock print form. At the same time though, I think the very soft um, black and white tones are mimicking something um, of the gradations of ink wash painting, uh, which was a traditional medium popular with Japanese painters. For my final object, I was tempted by the woodblock prints, but I really had my imagination captured by these fans, because I feel like they're an example of the extent to which the royal family, and Queen Mary specifically, were not only receiving gifts, but actually sourcing works for the Japanese art collection. Is it true that she was involved in auctions and collecting herself? So Queen Mary was a really devoted collector of Japanese art and she would frequently uh, purchase small lacquer boxes or carvings known as netsuke um, at auctions and also at fashionable dealers like Yamanaka & Co on Bond Street. Um, and here we have some examples of fans which she acquired for her collection and she would arrange these pieces in special dedicated rooms in the palaces. And in what other ways did the fan motif work its way into European art? In the late 19th century, fans were being imported into Europe in large numbers, and they really inspired a whole generation of designers and artists in France and Britain, names like Monet, Whistler, Degas. And so you often find the fan appearing in their paintings as a sort of symbol of cosmopolitan taste, hinting at a world beyond Europe. The first royal visit to Japan took place in 1869, following the end of the Edo or Sokoku period. This exhibition was intended to line up with the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games in 2020, but it actually feels particularly poignant that it instead aligns with the reopening of Japan at the end of what is sometimes described as the Neo Sokoku period, the time of seclusion during the pandemic. When here for Asian Art in London this autumn, stop by the Queen's Gallery for the Japan Courts and Culture Exhibition. It's a unique opportunity to bring together all of these extraordinary objects, which are otherwise scattered between Osborne House, Balmoral Castle, Windsor Castle, Buckingham Palace, and more. I look forward to discovering many more highlights of the Asian Art in London programme in celebration of their 25th anniversary.